Mm. Hi, Chris. Hi, Debbie. Let's hope this one goes okay. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I spent a little bit of time with Courtney. So um, this is the first time I've opened it up, you know, with this um, recurring meeting. So it looks like we're good. Oh, I don't want to be recording right now. Okay. Christine Bates. Okay, we are recording now. Yes, I see it. Okay, go ahead, sorry. Okay, so I'm not gonna open the meeting again. I'm simply gonna say that the meeting was opened with the appropriate formalities and that we are discussing the issue of areas we would like Horsley and Witten to consider for possible regulations. The first issue is that any applicant before the commission must realize that any issue involving the subject property is on the table for consideration by the commission. Um, the second issue for regulations is the cumulative effect of alterations on a property. Um, for example, when a property is altered and then sold and then altered and then sold and then altered. The third issue is consideration of reduction in the 5,000 square feet of disturbed land limitation to include a smaller amount. The fourth issue is our relationship with the Open Space Committee. Um, Hillary, you said you would check the MACC handbook and general laws to see if there was a particular provision that we could review. The fourth issue, or that may be the fourth, the next issue is a regulation requiring reduced nitrogen, uh, I'm sorry, reduced nutrient discharge within 300 feet of wetlands or surface waters. Um, this would inv involve both nitrogen and phosphorus. Another issue is the outdoor showers and whether they need to hook into septic systems within 100 feet of wetlands. Another issue is how slope is to be defined and whether the 100 feet needs to be extended in certain cases um, because of each site being unique and the sensitivity of each site. Another issue is how pre-1978 dwellings are defined and what is new construction post-1978 and is notice required. Um, the final issue I have enumerated is uh, the issue of coastal engineered structures with sea level rise um, and consideration of impact over the life of the structures. So what I'd like to do is open it up for any further comments that people would like to have Horsley and Witten consider initially. Um, I'll start. Barbara. It's very complex and these are very specific things, but I would like to, to mention that we went through some of these other towns um, new uh, bylaws for climate change. And Horsley Witten said, did you look at Arlington? Did you look at Maui? Did you look at Boston? And we said, yes, we like some of these. Um, we like Boston, we like Maui. Arlington, um, not so much. The only thing Arlington did was put one last like regulation among like 35 others saying that we should integrate the consideration of an adaptation planning into the project to promote climate change resilience. But it's a very broad and very sort of ambiguous kind of statement. And it was like the very end of their bylaws. And I think it should be right up front and center. I mean, this is why we're redoing, we're redoing this for climate change issues, for coastal resilience, and not just like tacking this thing into the end of our um, onto the end of our, our regulations. Um, okay, I also looked at 
some of the other ones that they suggested. The Boston ones were good, but, and we already said this, so it's like we're redoing this whole thing again. Right, because but they're not APCC, so the problem is we have we're two. We're doing it again, that. and we have new, new conservation board members who weren't involved in this initial discussion, too. So that's another issue. Um, I think that um, there were a couple others. The one that they suggested about um, Arlington was, as I said, just this last little thing on their uh, whole list. And the Falmouth one is that they were designating one area of Falmouth as a district of critical planning concern. Yeah. I think the whole of Wellfleet is a district of critical planning concern. And we shouldn't just single out one particular area like they did in Falmouth. I think the whole town is a, a district of critical planning concern. So, I mean, I, I, I went through some of those this t today and I, I just, uh, it was mind boggling because we did this like two years ago and I had to do it again. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Trying to figure it out all over again. Well, so, and I, I think too, we were waiting to see if Boston's regulation passed muster with the Attorney General, which I still, I guess I'm unclear on that. Okay. All right, I think what we can do is to keep all the ideas in the mix and make sure as we go through the development of the regulations, we consider all of these things um, and that nothing gets dropped. Yeah, but they were asking us, is there anything that resonates, like any one of these other plans that resonate? And a lot of us haven't even read these plans in two years. So uh, it, it's difficult to tell which ones really resonate and which ones are just sort of add-ons into their bylaws or regulations so and can i make go ahead. Jo joanne really knew this but now we're starting all over again it's very frustrating for me to like go back and do all this stuff again that's <laughs> okay michael yes so uh two things one we received uh, two years ago a zip file with lots and lots of these examples and if that could be sent to Leon and Ben, then they would have access to it without having to search it all out for themselves. All right. Send it to everybody again in case we lost it in our files. <laughs> Good idea. And the, the second one was I looked at the, uh, the regulations again, and it struck me, and it's in our regulations, I think, but not perhaps as strongly, this presumptive principle, that is the idea that the applicant has to prove that there is no harm and the distance varied. So uh, Hawaii, Kaui said 500 feet uh, yeah. and Falma said, uh, I think by the best possible, I uh, know, uh, Boston said by the best possible available measures uh, determining the distance. So in, in those, uh, and the Falmouth as well, there's a sense of the 100 feet is a, is a flexible distance. It can be more unless the applicant proves that it shouldn't be. I sent uh, uh, Hillary an email, but not that long ago, so it should be in the, in the, in the process. Uh, you want me to share that with the group? Wouldn't that flexibility put a big onus on us and possibly uh, come back in the court if we are able to just, we'd have to, we'd be in a position where we'd have to prove that it we would have to know that an appropriate distance has been established by something, by something factual, something scientific, something appropriate. We would not be able to choose a distance and and say this is the distance for everything, unless it, it fit the particular structure. Yes, but the burden of proof would be on the applicant. On the applicant.
Okay, I mean, we're not going to decide this today, and it certainly should be included in any list of items for the consultants to take a look at. Exactly. So I can forward this to them. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it should come from you. Yeah, that's fine. Happy to do so. But but the, the Falmouth issue, the, they're creating a district of critical planning concern, right? And they're, they're segregating out a little piece of the town that fulfills this, but isn't our whole town a district of critical planning concern? <laughs> Well, I think but that, don't we have the ACEC? Yeah, we have yeah. that, but that's uh, that's designated. But this other district of critical planning concern is something that the town uh, delineated on their own. I think we just leave it in the regulations, and this is we're going to go through the regulations specifically, regulation by regulation that's proposed, or right. do it in the subcommittee. And I think. Right now, all we want to do is get the ideas on the table so that we get the consultants enough information they can get started. Yeah, I, I agree. Launch or whatever. <coughs> this is not, you know, a one way street. Yeah. So, uh, on your second one, the cumulative effect over time, how far back? Uh, is that just looking at the square foot footage of the of the lot and how much has been already abused or changed or it might be it might also look at it in some other way if there were a reasonable way to look at it in terms of damage to a property um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we send this around, we can augment these somewhat uh, abstract ideas with some suggestions of particular cases or questions, at least, so that we can circulate those so that we're sending a clear message to the consultants. How much of this can we do outside of the open meeting? As long as you do it and you return it to Hillary without commenting to each other and without sending it to each other, okay. that's fine. We may not discuss it outside of an open meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good point. Thank you, Deb. That was very helpful. <laughs> Hillary, is that okay if you email us a list yeah. and people comment on it individually sure. back to you? For sure. Okay, is there anything else on this issue now that you want to address? All I'm right, just, I'm just like asking about the time frame because this is it's been going on so long. Um, are we looking at spring town meeting for it? Oh, I could talk about this. Um, yes, we're talking about a spring town meeting to present everything. And so it's, this contract is broken down into two parts. Um, the last part takes us to town meeting and sort of the, the first part takes us to December 31st. And by, by December 31st, we should have a draft okay. of the regulations and recommendations. So the second half, so that's the first half. So by the end of December, by January 1, we'll have a draft of the regulations. Then from January 1 to the spring, we get uh, final copies. We make sure it's consistent with the bylaw. And then the consultant helps us through a public process. Um, so there's two public hearings that we'll have to get it ready. And the only part that goes to town meeting is the bylaw, so not the regulations. Okay, Hillary, do we need um, uh, legal counsel yeah. on how that yeah. translates? Yes. Yes, that will come in as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Of course. Okay. I mean, it, it, I think the, frame, the time frame is doable. Um, it may involve a subcommittee <laughs> at some point again, but we'll see as we get closer. Okay. Um, all this right. Is, yep. Go ahead, Barbara. No, I said this is also uh, 
difficult, <laughs> but we're, we're plowing ahead. Yes, thank you. Incrementally okay. slow, but yes. <laughs> the next discussion, John, is Haas Pond, and that's really yours. Right. Well, you all got the letter, and um, the only thing, I have a couple of things I wanted to add. I sent, um, I guess, the, the last, just before the last meeting, I sent uh, 1848, or in any yeah. case, 19th century um, map of that area, and it shows so-called Haas Pond is a coastal lagoon connected to the head of Duck Creek um, by a creek, and, and um, the creek has fringing salt marsh on either side. So this was definitely part of the Duck Creek estuary. It was saline. Now we're calling it Haas Pond. Um, and I don't really understand um, how one private owner can get an emergency response that seems to be semi-permanent. Uh, but one question I had regarding the Main Street um, redesign, rebuilding of the intersection at Route 6 is uh, I was wondering if there was, and Hillary, you may know more about this um, from your many meetings with uh, DER staff, uh, whether the state has any law or regulation or policy that, that in place now, perhaps it administered through DER that requires any culvert in uh, culvert upgrade for the for fish and wildlife passage and for improved water quality whenever they replace or rebuild um, the roadway and, and underlying culvert. I, I believe there are re requirements for that. Uh -huh. And I think that's why that what well that's why they suggested we wait until the Main Street intersection got underway to make any changes. But if the but if if there's any new requirement has to include fish and wildlife consideration or improvement or restoration fish and wildlife passage and water quality, that would be way different than what's there today, and that would be involve a lot of engineering. So, will we see all this 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 great vastly improved culvert system on the, on these plans that we're looking forward to seeing? I'm hopeful of that, but that's not a guarantee. I mean, it has to come to us for permitting and we will get an opportunity if we don't have what we need to request what we need. Now, I, I was gonna suggest, can we demand that early on so they know to plan for that rather than uh, dealing with this after the fact and trying to remediate whatever plans they have? So I their don't... consultant is aware of it. So we did go back to the consultant and tell, tell them. Uh, the same time we mentioned the Diamondback Terrapins, we mentioned the culvert at Howes Pond. So they are aware of it. They have been notified of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I guess we just see what they come up with. Is that it? Um, well, John, you drafted that other letter, correct? Yeah, I said the... Uh, yeah, I sent a letter, uh, what, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, so we could certainly send that along as well. Um, could, we, could we copy uh, the appropriate person at DER? Maybe, yeah. Uh, uh, I would, uh, yeah. Just... yeah. What about uh, Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program about the Terrapins? Right. Uh, can you uh, copy them too about this issue? because it has to be designed so that uh, turtles don't get squished on the roads. So well, this, this was the draft, right? <clears throat> uh, the draft that I sent mentions terrapins, yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Barbara's right, we should copy them too. Yeah. Okay, so we wanna send this letter to DER, DOT, and DEP, and NHESP. Right, um, Mike Jones, is the uh, herpetologist for the state. Send it to him. We're dealing with uh, uh, terrapins and blue crab pots right now. So uh, climate, climate change is here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we have to let DOT know that we're really serious about this because yeah. it's not gonna be just a 
simple little culvert we're talking about, I don't think if we're going to do this right, and it's it's going to be a major um, expense and engineering effort to to um, to do this right. So we, I think we have to keep bugging them about it. I'll get that out uh, tomorrow. That's good. Great, Hillary. Thanks. Great. Thank you. No problem. Were both of those letters the same? I just want to. They weren't the same. I, I got it right here. We want this one. Or is this the one we already sent? This is the one we sent. Well, the one I, I sent a draft. Um, I don't. Yeah. This is what we it? sent in 2017. I see. And then and this. Hillary, you have the draft I recently sent to you? Yeah. And others? It's this one. Yep. Yes. Okay. Where would this, on this map, where would the culvert go? Right now, the pond is completely isolated, right? Culvert's the, under the road. It's pardon under, me? The yep. culvert is under Main Street. Uh, by yeah. Wicked Oyster or no, the by the bank building? By the new pot the shop. <laughs> okay. By the traffic light. Right. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. And there is something there now? Yeah. Well, okay. But yeah, two, two, I think there's a two foot culvert. Mm. Well, there's, there's lots of big rocks and there's water oozing through it. <laughs> but it's essentially closed. And we're expecting that with sea level rise, that'll start pushing brackish water back up there, right? Well, right now the state, the DT, DOT um, responded to the emergency situation and put in a valve that works, a uh, one-way valve, so it's keeping seawater out. Hmm. And before the town was, and I guess DOT was kind of laissez-faire, there was a very old uh, clapper valve on the end, the seaward end of the culvert. And um, for as far as I can remember, probably back 30 years, it's been a it's been half off or there have been holes in the pipe. So it's, there's been this benign, I think, benign neglect. And now they did a, they did a complete blockage of seawater flow into Haas Pond hmm. in response to this complaint about flooding. Yep. Hmm. Is there anything else on Haas Pond? Does the public want to talk at all? What was that, Hillary? I was saying, does the public want to talk at all? I don't. I thought Ryan might be interested, but I don't know. Um, I'm interested, but I'm just leaving. I'm not going to provide any input here. Um, but yes, I am very interested in what happens at that location. All right. Um, mail. Um, I did not get any mail, Deb. Okay. Hillary? Um, we, I don't know if you want to call it mail so much as we received a complaint um, on Main Street at number 55 Main Street, where we permitted, I don't know who the supervisor is, but we permitted um, a room a, a small addition where there was a foundation and this property is right across from the Wicked Oyster. And then we got a call that they had taken down a number of trees that weren't permitted. So we went out there last week and they had trimmed a hedge, uh, a very long old hedge of privet um, all the way between the properties of 45 and 55 Main Street. So 55 is the one that uh, has the political sign at the front. I think it says Biden on the, the doorway. And there was a super long privet hedge. And when we went out there, it was kind of interesting because the homeowner at 55 said there's a colonial law about trimming privet hedges that get to be too tall. And privet obviously is not a species that we would particularly be interested in conserving or preserving. So um, 
I do nothing of this colonial law. And he put me in touch with his attorney because I told him that, you know, you can't really take down any trees without our permission. You had an open filing. And then he lodged a complaint against his neighbor for- Which, which neighbor? This is the neighbor at 45 Main Street. Is that the pottery place? No, we have to talk about that place too. That's a different place. Um, this is just a private residence. And we got a letter from the attorney today uh, going to the neighbor that says, I represent your neighbor, and we're particularly concerned about our shared boundary. The debris in your yard is offensive and unhealthy. There's unregistered vehicles, unregistered boats, and there's a debris that could cause a possible impact to groundwater. So this got me thinking again about our like longstanding issue that we frequently talk about, about you know, is it junk? Is it debris? Is it treasure? What is it? And, and how can we regulate stuff in people's yards and whether we even want to do such a thing? So, so I could, I could grasp onto the tree complaint. I don't know about the colonial law piece of it, but we could work through that. I just, I'm kind of at odds about what to do about people's collections in their yards. So we were going to send that out uh, as an inquiry to colleagues in other towns that are part of our conservation network and see how they handle it because we've talked about this over and over again and I feel like we're kind of on a bit of shaky ground. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not easy. It's not an easy topic and it's offensive to people. So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with it. But that was, our, that was a piece of correspondence. So is there a complaint that we need to address? Yeah, there is a valid complaint of tree cutting, which is this privet hedge at maybe a locust tree, uh, okay. so which is easy you, to address. All right. So are they going to be invited to come in? Yes. Yes. He's getting the standard letter. We also went out to 66 Hiawatha today, and they'll be getting the letter for their landscaping activities. And we were also able to see the political rock collection. Yeah, you see what I was talking about? Yes, I saw that. And that's another thing. I can't determine who put the rocks there. I can't figure out if it's one person putting a rock there every day. Like, it's not a natural collection. No. And yet, I'm not sure what to do about that one either. But, but we have observed it. And I guess I think that whole bluff is going to wash away shortly. So um, it may be less of a problem in the future. And Doug and I talked about that boat rack today. And that will surely come down this fall or winter when the boats are removed and will not go back up. We're going to email that association and let them know. And, you know, we'll move forward with that. Okay. What, what association? What boat rack is that? That's the um, Omaha. Hiawatha. Hiawatha, yep. Okay, yeah. It's While we're talking about that area, could we please at some point have a discussion on what's happening on the Hiawatha side with the deteriorating road, the pavement, which is washing back and forth in Sisul's gutter and um, the situation there um, near the, the town stairs at the landing? Yeah. Um, for our next business meeting, I have sort of collated all the pictures that you had sent on the boats, floats, and rafts into a PowerPoint. I don't know if that'll be the easiest way for us all to view it, but I think that'll be a start. So I have that for our next business meeting on 10-7. Michael, you said Denny wanted to come in and be present on behalf yeah. of the Fleet Conservation Trust. Yes. Okay. So you will inform him? Yes, I, I already told him. I'll, I'll remind him again. We have a, a, a meeting on Monday. Um, and just to bring you up to date, we removed the uh, ascending boats, put them inland on some uh, Conservation Trust property, and then three of them were t returned back to the ascending spot. <laughs> So our, our removal was not successful. 
three of the same boats? Yeah. So people came to pick them up and then put them back? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is like getting so anyway, uh, from your house. We can talk about this when it's on the agenda, but yes. Yeah. We'll talk about Thank this in this respect. All right. Then um, in terms of further discussion of complaints about town, has anybody seen anything else that they would like to give Hillary notice of? <laughs> we take complaints all day, every day. <laughs> Don't hold back. All right, Hillary, do we have any jurisdictional opinions? We have one request, I don't know if I want to call it a jurisdictional opinion or not, from Maria Juster, and I just want to put it up there. Uh, hold on one sec, let me share my screen here. This is the pottery shop. I don't know if it's the same pottery shop you were talking about, but this it's is the, the one on Main Street. Yep, 115 Main Street. Here's the house, here's the shop. And she would like to erect a very small tent, the 10 by 10. And she is just trying to conduct a little business. Um, and she wants to leave it up until the cooler weather sets in and take it down at the beginning of November. And her only interest in putting it up is so that she could sell pottery before she vacates the space. Does the tent oh. have floor? Well, uh, we talked about this uh, one or two years ago where she was having, as I recall, pottery just on the coastal bank, and we made her take it away. Uh, yeah. Currently, there's a, uh, a an um, big umbrella with clothing hanging from the umbrella, so it's not on the uh, coastal bank, but the umbrella is. Is her, I'm confused, is her desire to do business outside because of the pandemic? Yes, uh, well, I believe that is the case that because her business is so bad, has been so bad because of the pandemic, she's just looking to pop up this temporary spot outside so she could do a little more business before she leaves, leaves. Her shop will no longer be at that location. So it's just a one, one season activity. And how long does she propose to keep this erected? So from now until November. This on, is this currently a lawn area? It's, um, it is a little bit lawned, yes. This is, okay. Think. But it's towards the water from the shop. So here's the shop, here's Main Street, here's the house, here's the tent that she wants to erect, and here's the shop. So it's next to the next to the house. I personally don't have any objection to this. She's going to remove it at the end of one month, basically. Um, we can be a little bit flexible for people who are suffering from COVID if we're not going to do serious long-term damage to the marsh. And I don't see this doing that. So I'm perfectly okay with this. That's my opinion. Could we, you give us the details of the tent? Does the tent have a floor and sides or is it no just- No floor, no sides, it's just a canopy. Okay. Could I hear from other people as to their impressions? It seems pretty benign to me. Yeah, I just think we should uh, set a date for removal. And make uh, it clear that this is a one-time thing. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with the date for removal, but I also want to make sure that any harm that's been done through the erection of the tent is corrected when it's brought down. Okay. So areas of disturbance restored. Yep. Okay. And um, a date, I just want to look at her wording here. Probably take it down at the beginning of November. So do we want to give her till November 15th? Sure. Yep. All right. So what her? do we call this? Is this just a request for advice? 
No, I, I would call it a jurisdictional opinion because uh, we, we, we need to have it as something. Okay. Do we need to vote then? Yes, please. Could I have a motion? I move that we allow this to go forward as a um, uh, canopy as long as it's removed by November 15th and the vegetation has, disturbed vegetation has been restored. Is there a second? I'll second, Leon. All those in favor, uh, Leon? Yes. Yeah. Uh, John Portnoy? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Ben? Yes. Michael Fisher? Abstain. Um, Barbara? And I'll go yes. So Barbara must have stepped out for a minute. So Hillary, that's all yep. set. Yep. So that was six, six, one, one. Got it. Thank you. So you'll need signature forms for that? No. All right. Then the, the last thing is meeting minutes. Um, John, did, did we have one set of minutes that no, needed think, to be approved? Um, I think there were two. I think there Chris. are two outstanding. Um, Chris can tell us, I hope. Okay, let me just get into my meeting minutes. Do we need some for last week? No. It was not an appropriate meeting, so it's as if it did not exist. Bear with me one second. We have 9-2, September 2nd, to approve, and then we weren't going to do anything with last week's. Oh, Correct. Okay. okay. So 9-2 has been edited. <clears throat> yes. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes of 9-2? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second, Michael. Okay. Um, I need a voice vote. Leon? Yes. John P Portnoy? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Ben? Yes. Um, Michael Fisher? Yes. Um, Barbara? You can't get on. She's still not here. Debbie, yes. So we're okay. all set with okay. that. All right, let me, let me um, see what we can do. Okay. All right, that takes us through um, the business portion of our meeting. Debbie? Yes. I just got a call from Barbara. She got shut out of our meeting. Oh no. So I'm not sure what happened there. Can she get back on? Um, I guess she's going to try. I can. I mean, she could I'll... call in. Yeah, let me let me talk to her again. Hang on. I'll go go ahead. Okay. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to address in the business portion of the meeting? All right, then what I would suggest is that we take a five or six minute suspension and come back uh, for the public hearings portion. Is that acceptable? Yep. Yes. Okay, we'll do that then. Thank you. Hopefully we can get Barbara back on. I hope so.
When were you able to get Barbara? You're muted. Sorry, I was on mute. She's tried a couple of times and um, failed and is now going to try to call in. Okay. How frustrating. Um, I think we can restart if people are here. Yes. Um, I'm ready. For Ben, Leon, John Cumbler, and Barbara. I don't see Barbara back on yet. Also, uh, John, were you able to talk to her? Yeah, um, she's going. She was going to try again, um, and then if it didn't work, she was going to call him. That's the last I heard. Okay. But she hasn't succeeded. All right. Um, we'll open the public hearing portion of the Town of Wellfleet Conservation Commission. This is opened pursuant to the um, statutory and regulatory authority cited before and is conducted pursuant to um, Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order and um, his the orders thereafter. Um, the first hearing is for Bowringer. Oh. Is someone present for that? Yes. Hey, do you want to go ahead, please? Good, good, good evening, David Little. I'm here with Bob Berenger. Um, and as, after the last hearing, there were a couple of changes the, the commission had requested of us. One, um, we, we hadn't shown the 50 and 100 foot buffer from the top of the coastal bank. So we've included that on the plan. And previously we had shown a 15 foot deck on the water side of the house and there was a concern about the the size of the deck and how much it extended into the buffer zone so bob revisited the design and now the deck only extends six feet um toward the water uh and and it and then it extends around both the north and south side of the house because um, access is needed to get around the house to get in the doors on the water side. So um, other than that, there, whatever, whatever someone was thinking might have been a, an exposed leach pit, uh, we don't know what that is, but it's not on Bob's property. And that being said, I'll open it up to questions. Thank you very much. What, what is the date of the plan we're all looking at, the revision date? The by is September 9. Okay. Debbie, can I ask a question? Of course, Michael. Go ahead. Yes. So uh, I was out there and I had uh, some questions about how you're planning to stabilize the bank. It looks like there's, what, three or four, was it six inch, eight inch PVC pipes running through the bank. Um, when you remove all of this stuff, the limit of work is uh, toward the land from the bank, but it looks pretty fragile. I'm not sure how you're going to manage that without the whole bank collapsing. Well, it obviously um, everything landward of the limit of work will most likely get disturbed. 
and it will be immediately regraded once the, um, the dwelling gets moved onto the new foundation. It will be regraded, seeded, and stabilized with biodegradable jute netting. And excuse me, not seeded, stabilized with biodegradable jute netting and planted with beach grass. So you're going to leave the PVC pipes in there, or are you going to are those going to be removed? I'll let I'll let Bob address that. Yeah, it's anything that's been you know, pre-existing, which includes the PVC pipe, which appears to run to a septic were probably really accessible from back in 1950 when the house was built. Uh, my personal preference is I don't touch anything until it becomes dislodged and then I remove it as it hits the beach because per your point it's it's a very fragile space and to do anything otherwise is only going to make it more you know, exposed if you will and, and more at risk. I mean the only other option is place ladders on the coastal bank, walk up and cut off the PVC pipe as it gets exposed each time there's a further collapse at the coastal bank. But uh, I think very much like a lot of the wellheads that have been exposed, you know, until they're physically on the beach, uh, it's prudent to kind of leave them be and then deal with them once they are actually easily accessible without further damaging the coastal bank. But you do see your responsibility for removing them as they land on the on the on the beach because right now when I went out there last week there was a very large thermometer there was some plywood there were some beams all sitting halfway up the bank. Yes, and right that in front is, of your porch. Yes, and my in my conversation with Hillary about that, uh, her I, I offered to make. You know, attempt to remove said items, but she suggested I wait until I have this meeting uh, so we can find out exactly what uh, the best desires are. But uh, those items, anything that's on the, you know, the top of the coastal bank ultimately ends up on the beach and then is removed. And it's my obligation to do so. Okay, thank you. I, Debbie, um, I'm just thinking about the, the, the way the ocean looked yesterday. And if we don't capture this debris before it's on the beach, then it could be carried anywhere. Um, so I, I would prefer that any uh, debris that shows on the coastal bank face or is about to fall, come, fall over the, from the top of the coastal bank, that it be cut off as soon as it's observed and, not, and that we not, not wait until it uh, makes its way down to the beach. So would you suggest some sort of monitoring program, an observation once a month, an observation every two months. What are you What are you saying, John? Well, it's a little bit arbitrary, but I guess two months would probably work pretty well. If there's been a major storm, then you know there could be a lot of uh, debris suddenly exposed, and in those situations, I think efforts should be made to remove it before it ends up on the beach. I think your concern is reasonable because given the um, activity yesterday at, at the, because of the storm, it was, it was amazing. And anything could have been washed away very rapidly. Um, as, as of this morning, and because of the delicate nature of both the positioning of the house and, you know, which is a bigger issue for me at this point, um, I have, Basically, after every storm event, I get documentation from my local property manager so I can know what the status is. And the plywood that was halfway down the bank is now two thirds of the way down the bank and I, it's easily accessible so I can have that easily removed. I can grab that without a problem. My concern is just, you know, I, can, I can put a ladder just like there's stairs. Uh, there is some compression of the sand, but there's also some disturbance. And, you know, it's, it, it's a catch-22, but it's, you know, the, the materials that end up on the coastal bank need to be resolved, you know, need to be dealt with and removed. So um, whether it's post every storm or every two months, whichever comes first, um, either way, I'm constantly monitoring it just because I don't want the house to slide in the ocean. Every two months, I'm not sure how well that will work. We could have two storms in one month and he could be scheduled not to go out for the second month. So. Well, Hillary, what I'm offering is after every major storm event or it's an or statement. 
Yeah. Or every two months. So it's whichever happens first. And through the winter months, I am watching it like a hawk. Yeah, uh, because particularly right now, um, some of the stuff that is exposed, um, perplexed because I have no idea where that thermometer came from. And there's the cesspool which got exposed in the last four or five months, which, you know, once again, I didn't had no idea it was there until the bank collapsed and exposed it. So but it's not something. Not your property. Sorry? That the cesspool's not on your property. It's yeah. It was underneath the property on the eastern side. I mean, now that it's now that the coastal bank has eroded back as much as it has, it has exposed itself. But you know, it's it was originally, I suspect, you know, the cesspool for the house. Okay, I thought David had said it wasn't on your property, so I I, 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 I misspoke, Hillary. Forgive me. Okay, okay. I just want I have a little bit of a cold, so I can't hear real well, and I feel like I can't talk real well either. So. <laughs> there's there's a cesspool to the north that was on Melinda's property, and I don't know what the status of that is. I've not looked recently, but it was partially collapsed, and um, and it's been that way for the last four or five years. But okay. that one is not on my property, and that may be okay. the one David was thinking of. Okay, got it. John, so do we do we have? Concern? I'm sorry. Go ahead. John, does that address your concern? Yeah, I just hope we can um, articulate the condition. That that you know that accomplishes what we're all after and keeping keeping debris off the beach. I understand it, and however you it's crafted into the, the order of conditions, I have no problem living up to those requirements. Anyone else with questions? I I have a comment, not a question. Which is, I think the homeowner has uh, tried to address our concerns. My biggest concern now is that we let this person move ahead before the whole house goes down and the amount of waste on the beach is, increases exponentially. I think, you know, he's gaining maybe a few years with this. Um, it's a lot of money for a few years, but I certainly don't see a problem given his uh, uh, addressing the problems we had before. I'd like to see this go forward, let him get on with it quickly before we have another storm like we had last time. Yeah, it's not only our purview, you know, he has to go to zoning also, so. Correct. Um, did anybody else have questions? All right, could I have a motion, please? I move that we accept this proposal for the movement of the house uh, at um, 164 Cliff Road, map 24, parcel 100. Construction of a new foundation, move dwelling to foundation, construct new deck, and move portions of the septic with the condition that um, materials that are uh, exposed and about to go down the uh, bank be removed. And with the change Second. that are to the deck configuration as shown on the second plan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was there a second? I'm sorry. Second, Michael. Okay, uh, we need a voice vote. John Portnoy? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Leon? Yes. Ben? Yes. Uh, Michael? Yes. Barbara? She hasn't been able to get back on. And Debbie, yes. So you're all set. Thank you so very much. I appreciate good, it. Good luck. That's good luck. <laughs> yeah, luck is not going to be. <laughs> But thank you anyway. I appreciate all the, your help. Does that need a supervisor? Sure does. Um, Hillary, as one of the conditions too, could we get a consistent um, keeping on a yearly basis of the erosion rate at that location? Because yeah. so erosion all right. rate. I'm on. Oh, thank goodness. Great. So we have put some conditions. Where I had jotted down uh, some conditions at our last meeting, and we have uh, no coastal engineered structures allowed on this property in perpetuity. The town of Wellesley Cotscombe considers this property as new construction. Um, and then I was sort of toying with once debris is exposed, it is to be removed within some period of time. I'm not sure what that period of time is. 
So I'm sort of holding on there. And then we have after every storm event or every two class debris to be removed from the coastal bay. Well, I think the best way to phrase it may be as quickly as reasonably possible. Um, well, that gives you. Uh, I'm. I'm sorry, this is Barbara. I just got in. I was shut out on Zoom and I'm on my husband's phone to get into this meeting. This is very frustrating. So what hearing are we on right now? I'm sorry. Cliff Road, the one we've been out there a few times, Barbara. It's right on. What, 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 what's Behringer. the name of the? Behringer. Behringer. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just, the only thing I want to say, because I'm, I'm very discombobulated because I've been shut out of this meeting, is that our regulations say that the following activities are prohibited within the 50-foot filter strip, and it's an expansion of existing structures, including but not limited to homes, buildings, garages, sheds, and decks. So I think if this is going into the 50 with a deck, uh, I'm not going to approve this. And, that's and, I, and I, I miss I miss the whole conversation because I'm shut out right now. I'm on a phone. Okay, so I think you probably want to vote against the proposal then. Yes, I do. If it's in, in the 50 foot, anything, any even a deck, yes, I would vote against it. Okay. Well, I, I think we all, I think we would have to. It's our, in our regulation. Okay. Are there any other comments? Um, does anybody wish to change his or her vote? Did we vote? Oh. I we did. We did. Okay. Uh, sorry, I I just I wasn't able to participate. Yes, got based shut on, out of this. Based, based on what Barbara said and her reminder, I'd like to change my vote to a no. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Um, I think that we have two no's and um, four yeses. So, with the conditions. But, uh, but how can we do this if it's against our regulations? I don't understand that, Deb. So, you can. I think we can make exceptions because of special circumstances. And I think this is a special circumstance. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not sure how special this is. It's just our regulations, and I, I want to abide by them because I think it's important. All right. All right. Then I think we're all set on this with the conditions. Hillary, was there anything else that you needed? Um, Supervisor. We need a supervisor, and I guess I'm thinking of an additional condition um, about removal, a planned removal plan to be submitted. So when the erosion gets to be within a certain number of feet, the deck comes down, um, and then the road gets removed. But I'm wondering how, how the commission feels about that. I think that's a really good idea. I think that we, we should begin to enforce a certain amount. Um, we faced this situation before where houses are teetering on the bank. Um, and I think at a certain point where there is no place to move a house to, we have to address the issue of dismantling the structure and removing it. So do we want, I guess what I'm thinking is that we have a sort of phased removal plan to be submitted by the applicant and provided to the commission for approval? Yes. But I think 
with each year as he submits the erosion rate at the property, yep. um, we should at some point say that when the erosion is within a certain number of feet of the structure or any portion of the structure, we need the removal plan submitted. Okay. Do we want to say 20 feet? Well, we've, we've dealt with this before um, with houses in the same situation on the, on the Atlantic shore. And we've, we've um, asked the engineers to call, tell us how much space they need to get equipment in there to remove the house. And that distance is what we went with in those, ca in those cases. So perhaps Bob or David can submit that to us while we're working on putting the order together. I mean, I guess in my mind, the, uh, you know, in terms of access to it, I mean, the, the removal will be pretty much the same way the house is being moved. There's, there will not be eastward of the property uh, any structures that aren't accessible from the west side of, of the structure. So, uh, but I can put together a written formal narrative and, and submit that to you, Hillary. Okay. Our concern is that we not get to the point where one storm is gonna knock the house over. You know, we've had instances of 15 feet of erosion that have happened in a severe storm. Yes, I'm and very familiar with that, <laughs> sadly. I know, unfortunately, you are. Um, we don't want to get to the point where we have waited too late. And I, I think, I mean, the one advantage of having the foundation in place is that it provides a lot more structure than a house that's sitting on sonotubes or just literally on the ground as some of the structures, the older structures are. So you you have the ability to have undercutting, you know, literally up to the eastern face of the house without it being compromised. And yes, it could very well be that you could lose 20 feet and have it undercut beyond that. But I understand your concern and we'll make sure that's part of the removal plan that's in place. Great. Is that, that works for me. Okay. All right. Then um, that's approved with those conditions. The next hearing is wise. We, 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 we don't have a supervisor. I think because it's involved in the SEPTA, shouldn't it be Hillary? Happy to do it. Thank Love you. Happy, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The next matter is Wiseman 106 Fox Island Road. That's Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good luck. Parcel 228 huh. is an RDA, construct new deck, replace sauna tubes. Is someone here for that project? Yes. Would you state your name, please? Terrence Doyle. Would you explain the project to us, please? Um, basically, we're taking the original deck and we, they want to expand it towards the water two and a half feet. The um, sound tubes that are there are not very good. Whoever originally built the deck did as little as possible with those sauna tubes to make them um, structurally sound and they have no anchoring. So what I'd like to do is replace them so that they have anchoring so that there's um, no chance of the deck shifting with the additional weight, which is very little, but it's enough to be a concern. How many sauna tubes? I believe five. I'm sorry, four. Is there a diagram that displays where they'll be located? There is. And the, the, I'm going to be putting them in exactly the same location as the originals. 
Okay. So you're just cantilevering two and a half feet out? Two and a half feet out, yep. So, uh, Debbie, may I? Yes, please. Um, what, is, what is, you mentioned the additional anchoring. I'm looking at your new deck diagram here, and it, it other than showing a uh, different size sonar tube, uh, can you explain this, this better anchoring? Um, well, right now, the, it's a continuous four by four on, on top of all four of those sonar tubes. And there is no bolt, no, not even a, um, a joist hanger st stuck in there nailed to the oh, post. I okay, I see now. There's nothing there. I see it now. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is Barbara. I'm going to once again, um, uh, you know, I don't know how much of this cantilevering is in the 50, but I would just draw the line right there and say our regulations say no uh, structures, decks, anything in the 50. And if this is going into the 50, then I, I wouldn't approve of this. Uh, I can't really tell from the diagram that I have here. And I'm sorry that I'm on a phone, so I can't see anything right now, which um, hampers my ability to assess this further. But I, I'm just going to say that if this is going into the 50 at all, even cantilevering, uh, I would not approve. Is so, this in the 50? From the diagram, it appears to be um, beyond 50, but I'm yeah. unsure because the 50 is not marked. It's approximately okay, 590 it, feet. I'm sorry, it's say that. It's not marked. It's approximately 85 to 90 feet. Okay, we okay. would need a diagram with a 50 foot buffer zone marked also. Okay. Um, there's no there's no plot plan at in the town of Wellfleet for this property. That's why I, I drew this myself. I went down there, I measured, and I, I checked the plot plans on both properties to the left and right and made an approximation. That's why I, I'm, I'm within five feet of all your measurements. I'm, I'm sure of. Right. But, um, I, but I, there is no plot plan. The plot plan for this property is actually the neighbor's house. All right. I think this all has to be on record. If we're approving it, we want to approve something that we can refer to in the, you know, uh, in records. So I, I think we need a really good plot plan with records. And then I would say if you're, you know, out of the 50, I, I would approve the cantilever. But uh, we need to have a good record of this if we're going to approve it. Can I ask another question? Sorry, this is Hillary. Certainly. Um, do you know the approximate cost of what this is going to cost to construct? Depends on the railing system, because they're looking at two different types of railing systems. One of them's fairly reasonable. One of them is the um, stainless steel system, and that would that would bump it up approximately three thousand dollars. So we're talking between six and nine thousand dollars for the whole project. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but Barbara is right. We do require a better map. Um, than what you got. So we will need a plot plan that displays the, the 50 and the 100 um, okay. in accurate measures. Okay. And uh, Debbie, may I add to that, the, that that 100 foot distance and that 50 foot distance has to be from the wetland boundary. So somebody with expertise in delineating wetlands needs to establish that boundary before you put these, um, these buffer zones on your map. When you Any competent land surveyor could do the job. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this matter is going to have to be continued until we get an appropriate plan to look okay. at. Why, why, when it comes back to us, I'd also like more information about what's going to happen under the deck, um, what the proposed extension would mean for that. Okay. Could you clarify that? He wants to know whether you're going to be storing anything under the deck, whether the homeowner will be, <laughs> or the area will be left empty, whether it will be gravel under the deck, whether it will be just land. We need it's, that information. Okay, it is, at the moment, it's dirt. 
It's okay. just dirt. We need we need to be sure that it's going to stay that way. Okay. Um. So we need to continue this matter. I don't know how long it will take you to get a plot plan and come back to us. Me neither. Um, it has to be submitted a week before the hearing. Yeah. So I, I don't think you will have enough time to do it before October 7th. Yeah. So I would suggest the earliest you could do it would be October 21st. Okay. But you will need to get that information filed with the commission agent. Okay. So can I have a motion to continue this till October 21st? So move. Is there a second? I'll second, Leon. All right. All those in favor, John? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Leon? Yes. Ben Franklin? Not Ben Franklin, Ben Fairbank. I'm so sorry. I keep doing that. Sorry. Yes. Michael Fisher? I abstain because the uh, Conservation Trust is in the butter. Um, Barbara? Yes, if you can hear me. We can hear you just fine. Okay, good. Okay, and Debbie, yes. So that's continued to the 21st. All right, the next matter is Kelly. Thank you. 480 Old Chequesset Neck Road, Map 12, Parcel 71, a request for a one year extension. Is there someone here to talk about Kelly? Uh, Debbie, I can, if it's helpful, I can read exactly what the extension is being asked for from the September 6, 2017 uh, minutes. Okay. Uh, it's an NOI to construct a driveway. David Lovejoy represented the applicant and gave the overview of the project. This is a vacant lot off the road, and all, the only work within the buffer zone is the entrance from the road. There will be a drainage system installed. This will be asphalt, and Barbara moved to approve the NOI seconded by John Cumbler in a past 6-0 with John Cumbler as the supervisor. And is there a reason for the need for an extension? Uh, let's see, we have a couple emails. And it says, I'm writing to request a one year extension for the driveway construction permit issued on September 20th of 2017 because it has come to my attention that it will be expiring in several weeks. The driveway has never been constructed due to the land being on the market for sale. A year's extension would allow ample time to get the driveway completed. Um, I, I, I guess I'm confused. If the land is for sale, are they really going to build the driveway? <laughs> I think they need the driveway to get onto the property. I've just really got the plan. I think, uh, what, what will what will this involve if we don't grant the extension? They have to start all over again. Yes. So they have a uh, Snake Creek across the road, and the hundred foot buffer zone. I, I think I think we should reevaluate when they come back. I, I would not vote for an extension. That's just my opinion. Sorry, we got to look at this again because I don't even know what this was about. I wasn't even there. <laughs> can I? Can I? There's substantial uh, grading involved as well, and it is in the riverfront area. It's. I mean, it's a. It was a fairly straightforward thing. Our only concern at the time, I mean, it's down the street from me. It's only concern at the time was the drainage, um, which they addressed. Um, I'm not sure that there's anything's going to change. It's not like this is a, a changing environment. It's a very stable environment. Um, uh, I, and the, the Snake Creek, it's, it's 
the property is south of where they're going to put the burn if the Herring River ever happens. And even if the Herring River happens, this is on the other side of Old Chequesset Neck Road, so it shouldn't have an impact on that as well. I just don't think this is something that really is a needs we need to worry about. Yeah, but uh, some conservation commissioners weren't even involved in the original, whatever it was, the original approval, and were asked for an extension. And I have no idea what we're extending. So, um, well, you know, I don't want to. Barbara, if I can interrupt, you moved to approve the NOI in 2017. Okay, that was way back. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for reminding me of that. But I have, I have no idea what this is about because I haven't, we haven't looked at this in a while. Is so. this the one where the, there's a steep hillside and it comes down to the road mm -hmm. and there's an issue of drainage yes. needed right there at sort of the juncture? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I do remember this one. So they're only requesting a one year extension. And they are proposing plantings as well, along with the drainage system. I don't have a problem with it. The extension. Does anyone want to make a motion? I move that we grant the one-year extension. Okay. Is there a second? Second, um, Michael. Um, John, how do you vote? Yes. John Cumbler. Yes. Leon. Yes. Ben? Yes. Barbara? Yes, only because I approved it the first time and I don't even remember <laughs> what it is. But yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, John Kubler is the supervisor, so we can okay. leave yep. it. Michael? Yes. And Debbie, yes. So they're, they're okay. Okay. Hillary, while we're talking about extensions before I forget, um, could you take a look at the property at the corner of Cove Road and Indian Neck and uh, tell me where they are yes. on their extension and whether they need to come before us? Because they've been building that for many, many years. Yep. All right. It seemed to get bigger every year. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, it's massive. <laughs> yep. Um, the next matter is McDavitt, 99 Holbrook Avenue, Map 20, Parcel 136. It's an RDA to construct a deck off the back of the house and upgrade the front porch. Is anyone here for that? Uh, I am Paul, myself. Okay, and could you state your name again, please? It's uh, Paul McDavid. Okay, and could you tell us about your project, please? Well, it's uh, fairly straightforward. On the front side, the east side, I'm, I'm looking to replace is some brick kind of pavers that are very beat up and tired. So we we're going to replace that essentially with a raised porch. Um, and on the back side, uh, they had a very small tire deck that we're looking to uh, tear that down and, and replace it with a little bit more to the, I guess, north side. And then have some pavers on the end of that. I don't anticipate all that much disruption outside of those two. Okay. Are there questions about this project? For the uh, for the I, port, the porch on the the low side. How will you um, how do you have access to to construct that? Is it from the bottom or from the top? The front porch. No, the uh, I guess it's the back, the back, the back porch. deck. Yeah, the back deck. Yeah, there's a driveway that uh, I believe there's in the room. Uh, most of the supplies are actually on site because I was concerned with COVID uh, not having abilities to build. So 
Um, most of the supplies are already on site. So this was, okay. the, this was, All right, go ahead. This was the project that we had talked about briefly where we got a complaint in from the neighbor that work had begun. And so we went out there, um, call, stopped work on the job, and he had revised his plan to accommodate what it was they had started construction on. So, so this is an after the fact filing? Hearts, hearts. So he had he had made an appropriate filing for the deck, but I believe he was unaware that the pavers also required conservation approval. And Paul, correct me, correct me if that's, I'm wrong. That's correct. The builder we hired uh, unfortunately misled me, saying that uh, I didn't need to pull a permit or anything to to put pavers in, and obviously that's not the case. And I apologize. And anything that's been done that is inappropriate will undo. But uh, the bill some fill to just level out the back part of the yard. It does drop off considerably, and so that one small corner is where he added the fill and some stone to. Uh, and, and on the drawing, I, I show kind of a couple different options. So if if you want me to go that far, I can scale back to whatever you think appropriate. Okay, who who was the contractor for the work? Uh, CD uh, Landscaping, it's Cedric, uh, I can't pronounce his last name, he's from uh, Brazil. Okay. Uh, I've actually Hillary. spoken with, with Karen, my neighbor, and, and she's fine now. She she and the builder got into a miscommunication is more what it was. Okay. And, Hillary needs his full name and address. Mm -hmm. um, it appears to me that this is an after the fact filing. Does anyone else have an opposite opinion? Uh, that sounds fine. I'm just concerned because I don't have, um, I didn't do a site visit if it's all out of the 50. Because uh, if it's in the, anything's in the 50, I'm going to have a, an issue with it because of our regulations. Uh, I'm outside of the, the 100. I'm, I'm in, the only area of concern is the ECAC, I believe, is, is the concern. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yep. Hillary, I would treat this as an after the fact filing and assess the after the fact Give filing. Cedric's last name. Both against the contractor and against the homeowner. Also, I don't see a silt fence um, in the diagram. Possibly I'm missing it, but I don't see it. As, as soon as I was aware of things, I, I went out and put, I've got, uh, I don't know, 14 or 15 bales of hay all lined up on the edge there. Okay, but it's not on your plan. That's what I'm saying. Uh, no, at that point, it, when the plans were drawn up, that wasn't, I was not aware of the issue. So okay, if you, if I went you, out and, and bought the hay and got it so it would protect. It needs but to there isn't any plastic behind the hay. Okay, I can, I can get the, uh, I think one of the, you guys mentioned that I might get there. I can, I assume Home Depot or somewhere I can get that product and put it up. Were there any trees taken down as part of the landscaping work? No, nope, no, no trees have been removed. There was uh, some, uh, some of the prick bushes that were growing up into the yard were, were trimmed back probably three or four feet. But as we speak, they've already, most of it's already grown back in. And is there a revegetation plan for once the uh, work is done? Uh, I, I hadn't had any, but I can certainly put some shrubs or whatever uh, is desired. There's, there's quite a bit of vegetation. I, that whole hill is, is you know, the, the plants there is. You know what type of plant that is? <clears throat> uh, related question, Debbie. Um, will it be any uh, disturbance to the slope below the proposed um, deck? It should be any uh, 
once the, the crest of the hill down, there's no, shouldn't be any disturbance. Okay. All right, and this is Barbara. We have to have some kind of provisions that um, below the deck, there won't be any storage, that there may be a, no, a possibility uh, we're, we're, for some revegetation or something below the it's, deck. It's basically dirt, um, and I'm not looking to change that. Whatever it is, I'm just gonna leave it. But may, maybe, maybe there could be plantings below the deck because something might be able to grow there and, and uh, hold the slope. I was just gonna let grass grow in, but if, if you have something that will go underneath the deck. I don't know what will. Well, we should make sure that the deck is permeable in the sense that there are uh, there are spaces between the the pieces of wood. Yeah, I was planning to have you know a quarter inch or so gap between all of the decks decking. Okay, what we're going to need is a formal description of the deck indicating how it's going to be built with the spaces, what's going to happen underneath the deck in terms of the dirt underneath and that there's going to be no storage there. Also, we're going to need a delineation of the 50 foot buffer also, which I don't see on here. Maybe I'm missing it. It's in so red, I think. I thought they were both on there. Am I missing it? I, I very well could be, and I apologize if I am. No, I didn't see it on mine either, Deb, but I, I'm not getting good um, resources it's on, back. It's, property. it's um, to the west. It's, it's off of his property. That's why it's not showing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sure. How, how high is the deck off the ground? Way, way high. It's approximately seven feet. Okay, so what's under the deck is important. Well, you're not gonna, you know, uh, I, I don't plan to use it, but um, you won't be able to stand up or do anything really underneath it. Okay, we don't want any storage under the deck. Yeah. And we want to know what the railings are gonna look like on the deck. What's that? What the railing, what the edge of the deck will look like? It's going to be a, a cable rail uh, system. Okay, we need to have a picture that shows us that. We, have an we need to have a record so that if something goes wrong, we can go back and look, and you can look and say, oh yeah, that's what I said. Okay, so you need a picture of, of the railing system, not a problem. It's going to look actually just like Karen's deck. Oh, Sean. I have a background question. Picture are, that we, shows are, we, are we ruling on this because it's within the ACEC? Is that why? Correct. And so it's this deck, it's this patio, and it's this proposed place on the front of the house. But okay. our jurisdiction is the ACEC. Okay. And the patio is made out of what? It's just pavers, concrete, I guess. Space between the pavers, is it permeable? It's yes. gonna be like a stone dust. Okay, we need, we need something that depicts that too, so that we understand how that's gonna work. Okay. And you give, uh, you give options A and B, uh, I think we'd prefer option B because it's smaller. Okay. Uh, Debbie, you <clears throat> talked about issuing a non-criminal citation to the contractor. Do you yes. want that in the amount of two hundred dollars? Um, it's an RDA. So is it two hundred or is it three hundred? So three hundred is the after-the-fact filing fee. That's not the citation. The citation is is separate from that. Okay, so both. Okay. So the, the contractor's name is Cedric, which is S-A-D-R-A-K. His last name is Cyan, S-I-A-N. Do you have a mailing? I believe he goes under CL Construction. Okay, 
possibly you can email Hillary the name and the address so that she has that in writing. Okay. I would suggest that we continue this matter till we get the information that we need. I, I don't know if anybody else has any feeling one way or the other about that. Could we get a, a picture of the porch as well? Yep, I mean, I have renderings. Uh, Trevor has done some of the architectural type work. And so I have some renderings of the front porch and I'll get some of the back as well. That would be helpful. Um, from my information, did we approve the back deck already? No. No. Okay. We have an no. I'm just saying that we need a continuance right now before we approve anything to, to get information that's properly delineated to show the silt fence, to show the, the structures that are to be built and to show them as they are to be built so that we can understand that. Hey, can, can you do me a favor run down? I mean, I've, I think I've written down all of the items, but I don't want to miss anything and then have to continue again, that's all. Right. Sure, I could do that. Uh, we have a revegetation plan to be submitted, so a landscape plan. Uh, and after the fact filing fee to be paid, which is $300, uh, we have no storage for the deck. We want a deck construction plan to be submitted. We want a paver installation to be submitted. And a doctor will say to do sad rack fire. I, I didn't quite hear the last two. Uh, the last two were uh, paved installation plan. Mm -hmm. So showing us where the pavers are going and the spacing between them and the construction. Okay. okay. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to see? Okay. Well, it just you should know that you're not supposed to be cutting down any bush or, or even clearing anything on the on the on the bank. Where is that now? <laughs> And and maybe someone could find out why I've been shut out of the meeting on my computer because I'm I'm listening on my husband's cell phone, but uh, I was just shut out. So this is not a good way to have meetings if people are going to be like shut out. <laughs> just asking. Maybe the town the town. Uh, Courtney can figure this out. I don't know. I was on for the first hour or two, and then I just got shut an hour or hour and a half, and then I got shut off. Okay. Um, the how soon do you think you could have this ready? Because uh, I can get almost all of it fairly soon. Okay, it needs to so be ready for the next meeting. Okay, it has to be in a week before the meeting. You understand that? Yes. Okay, the next meeting is October 7th. So you would have to have it in at the end of September. Okay. Oh, God. Which is just... Are you going we to... Do we need a motion to continue this? Yeah, I just need a date before we, we have the motion, John. That's all. I put sure that's enough time. October seventh. You want October seventh? If if that's not a problem, I think I can make that happen. I'm okay. gonna go in the next few days. Okay. Right. I so, move that we continue this to the next meeting. And could I have a second? Leon, second. second. Okay, I need a vote. How do you vote, Leon? John Cumbler? Yes. John Portnoy? 
John Portnoy? I can't hear you. You're muted. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Barbara. Yeah, okay. Michael Fisher. Yes. Uh, ben. Yes. Um, and Debbie, yes. We're all set. So you're continued till October 7th. Okay, thanks. All right, that concludes um, the business, I'm sorry, the public hearing portion. Could I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Is there a second? Second. Um, can I have a voice vote? And I'm sorry, it's just required pursuant to governor's orders. John Portnoy. Yes. John Cumbler. Yes. Leon. Yes. Ben. Yes. Barbara. Yeah. Michael. Yes. And Debbie, yes. So we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Sorry about your thing, Barbara. <laughs>